Hello and welcome back. I pray that you are rejoicing in this day that the Lord has made. Remember, if you need help, please contact us at Calvary Chapel Redeeming Grace. Today we're going to take a look at what could be called Christian ethics, or how we should live as Christians. Our scripture is from Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be without hypocrisy. Detest evil, cling to what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Take the lead in honoring one another. Do not lack diligence in zeal. Be fervent in the Spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Prayer. Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, Leave room for God's wrath, because it is written, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you'll be heaping fiery coals on his head. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. This is a very big bite of scripture, so let's see if we can't break it down into manageable bits, okay? The first one, verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. That is, let your love for one another be real and not fake. Detest evil. Cling to what is good. We may find it easy to either hate what is evil or cling to what is good. But Paul here reminds us that we are to do both. Hate evil and love what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Take the lead in honoring one another. If our love for our Christian brothers and sisters is real, we will love them deeply, and honoring one another above ourselves will be the normal course of events. Do not lack diligence in zeal. Be fervent in the Spirit. Serve the Lord. We are called to warm relations with one another, yet we are also called to hard work. The church is no place for laziness. Be fervent in the spirit could be translated as, with respect to the spirit, boiling. Como agua para chocolate. And that fervency is to be used to serve the Lord with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. We should be joyful, rejoicing in hope, not in results. While we bear afflictions patiently, afflictions are no excuse for being unloving or being lazy in the work of the kingdom. Remaining persistent in prayer, praying constantly about all things. Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. Our love for our brothers and sisters should motivate us to two things. Going to them to meet their needs and inviting them to come to us for hospitality. This is love in action, not a warm and fuzzy feeling. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. We are not to hate those who persecute us, whether they are believers or not. This is the same thing Jesus said in Matthew 5, 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. The first part of this means that we should be considerate of others' feelings above ours. We shouldn't expect them to be considerate of ours. It is how we can fulfill the second half, living in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Associate with the humble. 
In this we are to imitate Jesus, who came and ate with sinners and tax collectors. He humbled himself, and we are called to do the same. Do not be wise in your own estimation. We must realize how far we have to go to be like Jesus, no matter how much we think we know. Do not repay evil for evil. Again, Paul echoes the command of Jesus that we are to love our enemies and overcome evil with good. Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. Everyone should be able to see what is good and what is not good by our conduct. We should be careful not to place stumbling blocks before others by our actions. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. While we are at odds with the world we live in, we are not to seek out contention and confrontation. We are to live peaceably, if it is possible. The very fact that Paul includes, if possible, indicates that it may not always be possible for us to remain peaceful. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath, because it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. If we are trusting in God, we will not have a need to avenge ourselves. We are to have no place for our own wrath, but leave a wide place for God's wrath. The vengeance is mine is a quote from Deuteronomy 32:35. Vengeance and retribution belong to me. Paul then tells us what to do instead. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. These verses quote Proverbs 25, 21 and 22, and is the example of overcoming evil with good, which Paul says next, do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. And by following these commands he has laid out for us here, we will not be conquered by evil, but we will conquer evil with good, which after all is what we are striving for. So until next time, I pray that you will be following these commands to be able to live peaceably with your brothers and sisters. Goodbye, and thanks for watching.